outcome in medicine is being increasingly evaluated based on quality of life and cost-effectiveness, not just patient survival. Decompressive craniectomy, DC, is a procedure performed in specific cases of ischemic stroke, traumatic brain injury, and subarachnoid hemorrhage. The main purpose of DC is to alleviate increased intracranial pressure and significant brain swelling. Reduction in ICP can lead to better cerebrovascular compliance, improved cerebral oxygenation, and enhanced cerebral perfusion. While numerous studies indicate long-term benefits post-DC, it's often considered a last-resort surgery. There are notable long-term negative neurocognitive and psychosocial effects after DC, resulting in a diminished quality of life and financial strain. Details of complications related to decompressive craniectomy will be discussed since its usage is increasing nowadays. DC has a high complication rate, with rates going up to 53.9%. Complications can be categorized based on their onset. Early, within the first four weeks, or late, manifesting after four weeks. The early complications are hemorrhage, hematoma expansion, external cerebral herniation, wound complications, CSF leak, fistulae, postoperative infection, finally, seizures, epilepsy. The delayed complications are subdural hygroma, hydrocephalus, syndrome of the trephine. The risk factors for complications are patient specific factors, poor neurological status, a low preoperative GCS, below 8, increases the risk of complications. Age, being over 65 years old is another risk factor. While these factors can't be changed, the surgical team should be aware of them to monitor for potential complications closely. Describing the early complications of decompressive craniectomy, DC, 1. Hemorrhage. Early post-DC complications include the expansion of conservatively managed contusions and other bleeds. Expansion typically happens right after surgery and can lead to clinical decline, extended hospital stay, or even death. Hemostatic effect is lost with bone removal, and combined with reduced ICP, this can facilitate expansion, mostly on the ipsilateral side. New or expanding hemorrhagic contusions were observed in 58% of a series of 40 patients, with 80% occurring ipsilaterally. Hematomas, like extradural and acute subdural ones, can appear or increase in size post-surgery. A mandatory CT scan within 48 hours post-DC is recommended for early detection. 2. External cerebral herniation occurs typically in the first week post-surgery. It is defined as more than 1.5 cm of herniated brain tissue through the center of the craniectomy. Thought to result from edema induced by cerebral re-perfusion and increased capillary hydrostatic gradient after decompression. Large craniotomies and augmentative duraplasty can prevent herniation. 3. Wound complications. Classified as dehiscence, ulceration, or necrosis. Large scalp flaps or injury to the superficial temporal artery during emergency surgery can lead to ischemic breakdowns of wound edges. Preserving the superficial temporal artery and limiting the flap's posterior extent can reduce the risk of ischemic flap breakdown. 4. CSF leak. Fistulae. Overall prevalence up to 6.3%. It's believed that meticulous augmentative duraplasty and watertight scalp closure can prevent CSF leaks and reduce infection risks. A recent trial found no significant difference in complications like CSF leak between watertight duraplasty and rapid closure DC without it. 5. Postoperative infections include superficial wound infections, wound breakdown, surgical site infection, and subgaleal collections, occurring in about 10% of patients. Deeper infections, like an epidural abscess and subdural empyema, have an incidence just under 4%. Meningitis and ventriculitis incidence is around 4%, likely due to higher chances of CSF leaks. Early detection is crucial, especially by checking for signs of meningeal irritation. 6. Bone flap preservation in abdominal pouch. Apart from scalp wound complications, wound breakdown and infection can occur when the bone flap is preserved in an abdominal pouch. Seizures, epilepsy following decompressive craniectomy. Postoperative epilepsy is a common complication in patients who undergo DC. Mechanisms include increased hyperexcitability and a reduced epileptogenic threshold. Kreutzfeldt et al. 
studied 55 patients who underwent DC for malignant middle cerebral artery infarction. 49% developed seizures within the first week. 45% developed epilepsy within one year of surgery. Santa Marina et al. observed seizures in 47.5% of all patients undergoing DC for malignant MCA infarction. 53.7% of survivors. Prolonged delay from stroke onset to decompression, greater than 42H, predicted the development of epilepsy. Brandani et al. reported, seizures in 61% of patients with malignant MCA infarction undergoing DC. 59% developed epilepsy. For TBI patients, those with seizures had a significantly longer hospital stay, even though the difference in seizure incidence, 10.8%, was not significant. Phenytoin and levetiracetam are potential anti-epileptic drug options. Late complications following decompressive craniectomy are 1. Subdural hygroma. Prevalence, 27.4% in patients with TBI. 12.5% in patients with malignant infarction treated with DC. Mechanisms. CSF flow abnormalities due to decompression, trauma, or surgical manipulation. Increased cerebral perfusion pressure. Locations. Subdural, subgaleal, or interhemispheric areas. Relationship with hydrocephalus is speculative. Duraplasty and early pressure dressing post-DC can reduce occurrence. 2. Hydrocephalus result of perturbation of CSF flow dynamics after decompressive procedures. Incidence ranges from 0.7% to 86%. Risk factors. Craniectomy margin closer than 2.5 cm to the midline. Early cranioplasty can mitigate the risk. 3. Syndrome of the trephined. Prevalence, 10%. Symptoms. Motor weakness, 61.1%. Cognitive deficits, 44.4%. Language deficits, 29.6%. Altered consciousness, 27.8%. Headache, 20.4%. Psychosomatic disturbances, 18.5%. Seizures or electroencephalographic changes, 11.1%. Cranial nerve deficits, 5.6%. Symptoms and cerebral blood flow abnormalities can improve after cranioplasty. Early cranioplasty, 5 to 8 weeks, can help mitigate risks. Aesthetic and functional concerns. Delay in cranioplasty or bone flap resorption post-cranioplasty can cause scalp depression. Temporal hollowing and chewing difficulty can arise due to extensive temporalis muscle dissection. Techniques like on-block detachment can help achieve better aesthetic results and normal chewing ability. Hey everyone, if you've enjoyed this content and want to stay updated with our latest videos, please hit that subscribe button below. And don't forget to ring the notification bell, so you never miss out on our future content. Join our community and let's keep the conversation going. Outcomes in medicine are increasingly evaluated based on quality of life and cost effectiveness. While DC has beneficial effects, it's still viewed as a salvage surgery with long-term neurocognitive and economic implications. Overall complication rates can reach up to 53.9%. Complications can be categorized as early, within the first four weeks, and late, manifesting later. Regular CT scans in the first 48 hours post-DC can help detect complications early. Duraplasty and early pressure dressing might reduce the occurrence of subdural hygromas. Remember, while decompressive craniectomy can be life-saving, it's essential to be aware of its potential complications and manage them proactively.